went to bed, we arose. You sustained and kept us. Father, we also thank you for your graces, provision, help, favor, mercy, for all that you did for us yesterday, from the beginning of the week. Father, we cannot really thank you enough in words. Help us to show our deep appreciation of thy loving kindness unto us by sincere, willing, faithful, and active service in your holy organization. Let your kingdom work continue to grow, increase, flourish, prosper, grow by leaps and bounds, grow from strength to strength, and from glory even unto glory. Father, we have come before your throne of grace this morning so that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You said the desires of the righteous will be granted and their expectations shall not be cut off. Therefore, Father, whatever is the issue of concern that we have come to this prayer meeting with, grant us our heart desires in the name of Jesus. That who will live here fulfilled, blessed, to show forth your glory in righteousness. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Our Lord is good. And all the time. Hail Jehovah and Jesus Christ. Take your seats, please. Well, brothers and sisters, we give profound thanks and praises to the Most High God, Jehovah, our Heavenly Father, for keeping us, making it possible for us to be here this morning, early enough for the prayer meeting. The importance of prayer in the life of a Christian cannot be overstated. We cannot do without prayer. Just as oxygen is to life, so is prayer to the life of a Christian. We have the understanding on the authority of God's word, as said by Jesus Christ in John chapter 15, verse 5, where he said that without him we can do nothing, which means therefore our sufficiency is of God. We must look to him at all times. True prayers for the fulfillment of his plan and purpose towards us, his children. So before we start praying this morning, I want to give you a charge on living by the word of God. Living by the word of God. The word of God is also known as the truth. The word of God is like a manual to live in. Just like when you go and buy an electronic from an electronic workshop, they give you a manual book, instruction guide as to how the equipment is to be used. That is how the word of God is to live in. It is our manual for living. What does it mean to live by the word of God? To live by the word of God is to live by the details of the truth of God's word. To be influenced intentionally in our thinking, in our belief, and in our action by the word of God. It also means to be ruled or controlled by the word of God. That is what we mean when we say you live by the word of God. The word of God takes precedence in your life, takes precedence over your opinion, over your thought, over your thinking, over your belief. You are controlled by the truth of God's word that you can be said to be living by the word of God. 
Why do we need to live by the word of God? Number one. When you live by the word of God, it bets the fear of God. Without the word of God, you cannot have the fear of God. When we talk of fear, we are not talking of the phobia. We are talking of reverencing God that will make you to depart or run away from sin. Say, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 19, God told the Moses to tell the Jews that when they get to Canaan and they, and they choose a king, that he will live in the word of God so as to learn to fear God. So without the fear of God, one cannot be said to be living by the word of God. Number two, reason why we should learn or live by the word of God is that it will make us to please God. Living by the word of God will make one to please God. Talking about Enoch in the Bible. The Bible says that before he was translated, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. And Jesus Christ said that his father has not left him alone. Say because he does those things that please God. John chapter 8 verse 29. So the living by the word of God will make you to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he exists and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But you cannot talk of faith without the word of God. And so number three, reason why we should live by the word of God is that it builds faith. Builds our faith. Our confidence in God is strengthened when we live by the word of God. St. Paul says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. But for reason, why we should live by the word of God, it will make us to make right and wise decisions. Read Proverbs 3, 21 and 23. When you live by God's word, your decisions, your actions, they will be guided. You will take the right decisions at all times because the word of God is infallible. Read Proverbs 3, 21, 23, yes? Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue? Again? Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue? What are you reading? Number five reason why we should live by the word of God is that living by the word of God will make us to have favor with God and with man. The word of God brings favor. Read Proverbs chapter 3. My Read verses, verses 3 and 4. Yes? My son. My son. Let not them depart from the eyes. Talking about the word of God. He said we should not let the word of God as contained in the Holy Bible, the truth of God's word, to depart from our eyes. That means it should be our constant companion. Yes? Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Yeah, that keep sound wisdom and discretion. Wisdom of God can only be found in the word of God. Yes? So shall there be life unto thy soul. Yeah, that. He said, when you let them not depart from your eyes, you keep sound wisdom and discretion, it will not depart from your soul. Yes? And grace to thy neck. Yeah, that it will bring grace to your neck. Yes. Then shall thou walk in the way safely. Again. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely. Yeah, that he said, then you will walk safely in your ways. You are reading Proverbs 3:23. I've moved from there. I said Proverbs 3, 3 and 4.
When I quoted you that time, you were not ready. You were doing something, you were not concentrating. Now go to three, verse three and four. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Yes, he said, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Yes. Bind them about thy neck. Yeah, I'd say bind them around your neck. Truth is the word of God. Yes. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Say, write them in the table of your heart. Yes. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Hear yeah, that? That when we keep to the truth, we live by the truth of God's word, then we'll find favor with God and with man. Another reason why we should live by the word of God is that it will make us to live a triumphant or victorious life. A word of God. St. Paul said, let the word of Christ richly dwell in you in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's a book in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. It's a thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph in Christ Jesus. So when the word of God indwells you, it's a greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The devil that is in the world, the word of God that is in you, will make you to gain victory, triumph over the works of Satan. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Another reason why we should live by the word of God is that it will make us to prosper and to be successful in life. To succeed, even in your secular work, you need the word of God. It will help you to prosper, to succeed in whatever you do. And Joshua was told, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to observe to do according to all that is written therein. So shalt thou make thy way to be prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So prosperity and good success, the foundation is living by the word of God. Through the word of God, you also get true deliverance. When you live by the word of God, you live in the true deliverance of God. Read Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9. It's a true knowledge shall the just be delivered. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. So when you live by the word of God, it will make you to have true deliverances of God. You cannot have the word of God. You cannot know the word of God without living in the word of God without doing perpetually as a lifestyle the word of God that is what will bring all the blessings that are contained in it another reason why we should live by the word of God is that it will give us divine guidance divine guidance and direction the Lord will lead you as his shepherd David said in Psalm 119 Verse 105 said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In other words, the word of God will make him to see his way, will shout for him his course in life, the right path to follow, the right direction at all times to take. The word of God is a lamp and a light. It causes it through a way of life. Our inheritance eventually of everlasting life can only be received by us when we live by the word of God. Christ said, the words that I preach unto you, that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
John chapter 6, verse 63. There's a Paul in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20, verse 32. Say, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So our inheritance in Christ can only be found in the word of God. And what is that inheritance? Ultimately, it is everlasting life in the kingdom of God. Pastor John said, this is the promise he has promised us, evil, eternal life. So you can see that we cannot do but to live all the days of our lives by the word of God. If we want all the blessings of God, if we want all the goodness of God, if we want all the deliverances and mercies of God, if we want all the preservation of our lives, then we have no choice but to continually live in the word of God. I close, read James chapter 1. James chapter 1, read from verse 22. Then we're going to prayers. James chapter 1, read from verse 22. Be fast. But, but be doers of the world. Hear that? Pastor James said, we should be doers of the world. To be doer is to be living by the word of God. Be doers of the world. Yes? And not hearers only. And not hearers only. Just coming to service. Hearing without doing. We are wasting our time. We are serving God in vain. We are making a fool of ourselves. What we hear, we must translate them into action. Practical. Living by the word of God. That is what will make us to be saved. Yes? Deceiving your own self. Yes, that, that. Deceiving your own self. And that is the great, the greatest disaster anybody can do to himself. The greatest calamity you can bring upon yourself is to be deceiving yourself. Apostle James said, if we hear and we do not do what we do, we are deceiving ourselves. Yes? Well, if any be a hearer of the word, if anybody be a hearer of the word of God, yes? And not a doer. And not a doer. He does not live by it, yes? It's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. It's like a person. You are coming to this prayer meeting now after you have taken your bath. You went to the mirror. You looked at yourself. You saw how everything was put in place. Before you left the house, before you left the mirror. But as soon as you left the environment of the mirror, you forgot the kind of person you've just seen. That is how it is. When you hear God's word and you do not do it. Yes? For if be ordered himself. So that person looks at himself in the mirror. Yes? And goeth his way. And he goes his way. Continue now. And straight away forgeted what manner of man and he was. And immediately he left the mirror. He forgot the kind of person that he is. Yes? But also looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Hear that now. Say, but also looketh into the perfect law of liberty. The word of God as contained in the Holy Rates. The Bible, yes? And continue it therein. And he continues to do it, to live by it, yes? He be not a forgetful hearer. That person, that brother, that sister, be not a forgetful hearer, yes? But a doer of the work. Hear that? But a doer of the work, yes? This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his days. So the foundation for our prayers to be answered at any given time is when we are living by the word of God. Prayer is of no effect. Prayer is useless if you are not living by the word of God. If you are not controlled, if you are not guided, dictated to by the word of God in your thinking, in your belief and the things you do, we are just wasting our time. You must adjust yourself to conform with the, with the truth of God's word. So we are going to pray. In this 
prayer session. We are going to take two prayer points only. Then we will sing, praise God, then come back for the second session of prayer. First, pray against every plan of the devil and his agents to corrupt this day, this week, this month by instigating, fomenting, or causing any form of evil or wickedness against the church of God, God's kingdom mission, against you and against our loved ones in the name of Jesus. Two, pray by the wrath of God's judgment and vengeance, any force that plans, intends, or attempts to hold back every blessing God has prepared or package for his church, God's kingdom mission, the membership, you and your loved ones be subdued in the name of Jesus. Pray those to pray upon. Let us rise. Give us devotion. <laughs>
mighty and everlasting Father. The great I am who rise upon the wings of heaven by your holy name, Jah. Once again, we give you all glory, honor, praise, reverence, and adoration. Father, we come before your throne of grace and majesty to seek your face, to seek your intervention in various aspects of our lives. You disappoint the devices of the wicked so that their hands are unable to perform their evil enterprise. Father, let every plan of the devil and his agents to corrupt today, this week, this month, by instigating, fomenting, or causing any form of evil or wickedness against your church, God's kingdom mission, against the membership, against us, your children, be disappointed, frustrated, paralyzed, brought to naught, cancelled in the name of Jesus. Father, by the rod of your vengeance, by the rod of your judgment, let any force, spiritual or physical, that is planning or intends or attempt to hold back every blessing that you have prepared or packaged for your church, packaged for your children, packaged for the membership, be subdued in the name of Jesus. Be brought or not be defeated because to be ashamed so that your name alone will be vindicated and glorified above the high heavens. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Our Lord is good and all the time. Give God praise, I praise this to appreciate and thank him for the answers to praise. In the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will sing, I will dance to you, for you will be my heart forever and ever. Hey.
and all the time. May you all be blessed in Jesus' name. Take your seats, please. We are going to take two prayer points for this session. But it's Psalm 36, verse 8. We are going to pray with our scriptures. Psalm 36, read verse 8. What are we told? Or what was the prayers of King David? As inspired by God through the Holy Spirit. Read. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Psalm 36, verse 8. Yes, continue. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of the house. Read properly, read again. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of their house. Yes, he's talking about the people of God. That they will be abundantly satisfied by the fatness of God's house. In other words, all the blessings available in serving God in his true holy organization. He said, abundantly, the people of God will be satisfied with it. Yes? I shall make them drink of the river of the pleasures. Yeah, that. He said, God will make them to drink of the river of the pleasures of God. For in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand, are pleasures forever. Psalm 16 verse 11. So I'm going to pray. Pray that this day and this week you and me will come under an open heaven. And we shall be filled with the treasures of God. Say, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Eating riches of sacred places. Isaiah 45, verses 2 and 3. Father, let the fatness of your house abundantly satisfy us. Make us to drink of the river of your pleasures in the name of Jesus. Then ask the Lord, to lead you and me to the blessings he has prepared for us. Today, this week, this month, this year. He said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. And David said in Psalm 68 verse 19 that every day there is a benefit that God loads his people with. So ask the Lord to lead us to that blessing he has for us. He has prepared for us today, this week, this month, this year. And position men like angels to help us in every phase of our blessings in the name of Jesus. Let us rise three minutes individually. Commit those prayer points unto the Lord.
the giver of all perfect gifts and blessings, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Father, we ask that this day, this week, you bring us under an open heaven. Fill us with your treasures. For you promise that you will give us the treasures of darkness and eating riches of sacred places. Father, let us be satisfied with the fatness of your house by your overflowing blessings. Make us this week, this month, this day to drink of the river of your pleasures in the name of Jesus. Father, we also ask that the blessings you have prepared for us, for you said that you will bless them. You will make the places round about your hill a blessing. And you will cause the showers to descend upon your people. Father, lead us to the blessings you have prepared for us this year. Amen. This month. Amen. This week. Amen. Today. Amen. Position men like angels mm. to help us in every phase of the plan of the blessings. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering our Thank prayers. Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Our Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. Thank God, praise Him for the blessings that is coming your way.
Day. Remember, we have two events this weekend. First one is an Asa Isaba, a funeral rites of late brother Michael Sigmele will be coming up at the Saba. Let us make it a point of duty as many of us that can go, if not all of us, shall attend the burial. Rasegbele is a well-known, very prominent member of this church. One of the foundation members or foundation elders God used, particularly in Portacourt, to begin the church there at the split of the GKS. And since then, God has been using it. The church today at the Sabbath, by the grace of God, is one of the legacies of the late brother. So let us Give him the honorable and befitting barrier that by God's grace is befitting or fitting to him. So tomorrow or today, four o'clock, we have the condolence visit to the family. The traditional ruler of Isaba is the son of the late brother, another very active member of the church. Before he became a traditional ruler, he was a member of an initiative committee in Port Very active. 
father to the same thing. When he was in Atak Isaba, he was coming to worry here yeah, every Sunday for service. From that distance. And he would be the first, among the first to come. To show his faith, his commitment to the service of God. So we owe a duty, responsibility to him and to God in particular. To give him what he deserves. A perfectly glorious Christian burial. And tomorrow is the burial proper. There's uniform for the burial. Yellow wrapper, white blouse. What? Okay. Purple wrapper. Okay, it's okay. So there should be no, there should be no quarrel over that. I control your temper when you are here before God. Let me misbehave. Uniform for tomorrow burial. Purple wrapper, white blouse. The popular time. That is my. And sorry, on Saturday, we also have a marriage coming up here in the Obete. Marriage will be coming up here. The son of Brother Uzziah Shajari. Son will be getting married here on Saturday. So, as men, if not all of us, should make it a point of duty to also attend the marriage on Saturday. All for our blessings by the grace of God. Let us say final prayers. Oh, merciful and the most loving Father, with joy, oh Father, and happiness in our heart, we give you thanks, honor, Praise, adoration for all that you have done for us, your children. We thank you for the joy of your word that we have had. We thank you for all that your word has done in our lives, making us better people in this society. Father, let your blessings we have asked for, O oh Father, flow in our lives so that we will live to ever give you thanksgiving from time to time. As we are living here to our respective homes, oh Father, we believe indeed that your blessing will go with us. Your protection will go with us. Success will be our portion. We shall live to rejoice before your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our Lord is good. And all the time, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord increase you a thousand times more as he has promised. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our Lord is good and all the time. Hail Jehovah and Jesus Christ.